Hey there, everybody. This is Beyond the Beach, career conversations with graduates of Cal State Long Beach. I'm your host, Kenji Klein, Associate Professor of Management at the College of Business at California State University, Long Beach, where I teach business strategy, general management, and organization theory. For those of you joining for the first time, in this show, I interview former students and recent graduates about life after Long Beach. Our conversations cover topics like how my guests chose a career path, how they landed their first job, and what it's been like to navigate the challenges and opportunities of their early careers. My hope is that you will find their experiences useful and inspiring in helping you chart your path beyond the beach. My guest today is Wade Carlson. Wade was a student in my business strategy class back in 2018, and now he works as an SEO specialist, and um, it's really great to have you here. Hey, Kenji. Thanks. Thanks for having me. All right, so let's, let's dive right in. I'm, I'm wondering if you could just briefly introduce yourself to the audience, um, tell them you know, who you are, when you graduated, what you studied, why you chose the field that you studied, and what you're doing now. Oh, glad to. Uh, my name is Wade Carlson. Um, I graduated Cal State Long Beach in um, 2018 um, with a degree, a bachelor's degree in international, international business. And um, right now I'm uh, doing SEO, search engine optimization. I've been doing that for the past uh, five years. Okay. And so um, it's interesting. I couldn't, I didn't remember that you did international business. So yeah. what was it that drew you to international? And then I, also, and also, are you doing anything international now? <laughs> I, I was thinking you were going to ask me. Yeah, I would expect course. you to ask. Thank you. Um, so I don't know why I chose it. I knew it was like a little bit more challenging and required a little bit more courses and I wanted to study abroad. I needed a good excuse oh. to study abroad. So that was, um, that was part of it. And, you know, definitely like travel. So I was hoping to maybe at one point get into some sort of international work. Um, but, uh, but it, I'm not really doing anything, um, <laughs> anything to do with international business right now, but having the international business degree, it had all, all the other important fundamentals below it to get there. So right. it was definitely a, a good degree to, to have, and it might apply to, to later on, but right, but right now uh, I'm not really doing anything to do with it. <laughs> so. so did you do a study abroad? Yes. Yes. Where, a study. Where'd you go? Yeah. Um, so it was a short term study abroad okay. and we went to, um, Shenzhen. Um, oh, okay. Uh, China. So you got to see all the crazy factory, super build up, massive stuff over there. Yes. That's so cool. we st we spent the it was like a about two and a half weeks, and we spent the first first week in Shenzhen, uh -huh. and uh, we we studied at a university, and then did a lot of uh, business tours, just right. business uh, just uh, different things from like garden hose supply companies to. Um, uh, incubators for startups. Oh, cool. So that was kind of half the, like, part of the time was in the classroom, and the other part of the time was kind of going out and, like, exploring and seeing what it's what it's like there. So right. uh, the other half of the, the trip, we were in Beijing, and then oh, kind of did okay. the same thing. We uh, stayed at the, you know, university, or hotel right outside the university. Um, you know, we went to class, met up with the students, and then um, and then the same thing. We went and we saw some really cool, uh, just you know, local businesses right. and uh, different uh, uh, companies from startups to uh, like larger enterprises, like for tours. And, yeah. Yep. In 2017, 2018, I imagine China was just hopping at that point. Oh, right? absolutely. Right? That was pre-COVID. Yeah. It must have been nuts. Yeah, I know, and I'm so glad I got to go when I yeah. when I when I did. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Yep. So um, so then you graduated, mm -hmm. and then um, what did you do right after you? finish so what was that what was that like how'd you find your first job so, what were your goals how'd that how'd that yeah. play out well first I'm gonna back up a second because my, okay. my career path wasn't really typical to everyone else because I was in the U.S. Coast Guard so I went to school oh, I was in for okay. 15 years so this is like I wanted to start a second career right all right so um I went to Golden West College transferred to Cal State Long Beach you know study international business and um and then from, from there, I got an internship uh, with a small um, family-owned logistics company, Global Logistics. Okay. So my degree was international business, so that's kind of what I was looking for in Global Logistics. Right. I thought it was the way to go. Did, and you, did you get that through the college? Yes, I did. Yes, I got it through. Uh, was it the? Brotman Hall. It was oh, like so the, the student okay. something. Yes. Okay. So it wasn't, it wasn't through the um, Student Center for Professional Development on, in the College of Business, like on our building. Uh, no, I, okay. no, I don't think so. But it okay. was through the it was through the the university though, okay. that I did. Okay. I did get the did I did get the internship. I'm just trying to put mm -hmm. a plug in for SCPD because oh, I, really, awesome. okay. well, I, I think was they SCPD do really they do really right. great work there too. So I'm just yeah. like, hey, if you're listening yeah. and you're looking for an internship, you mm -hmm. guys should check them out. They're really yeah. good. All right. Anyway, so yeah, no worries, no worries. <laughs> so I went from um, like I got this internship um, my senior year, and yeah. they they said, hey, if you you know you do a you do a good job, then you know we'll, we'll put you on full time. So uh, 
first of all, the, what the job was. Okay, that's yeah. important. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I got hired on as this like a you know marketing assistant intern right. basically, and um, one of the cool things about working for such a small family owned company is like you know they. They really like to, because there's not a lot of people there, so it doesn't really take lo- like long or that lot of a voice to be heard. Right. Because right. you're right there. I can really go right. up to the CEO, maybe. I mean, my idea better be good, you know what right. I mean? But you get to see, and you get to see results right. quicker of what you do. So that's just, let's just get out, that out of the right. way. Because, like, I'm here at Cal State Long Beach. Mm-hmm. We are a huge monster, right? The CSU is, like, the biggest, you know, public university in the U.S. Yeah. So yeah. I have no influence on what goes on in the chancellor's office, oh, right? No, so it's exactly. totally different. So right. you just see how it is. Yeah. So with a smaller, you know, smaller organization, yep. definitely has its, has its uh, definitely the pros and stuff. But so um, specifically, I was hired uh, for that company to do, to basically set up their CRM and their email automation. Hmm. They just start, start, started to kind of gradually get into, like, the digital or digital marketing, right? right? So they were doing traditional stuff, and they're like, no, we need to go all the way. So they only had two salespeople, one inbound, one outbound, right? right? So my job was basically to set up the databases, um, you know, take do database hygiene, clean it up okay. and make sure because, and set up lead scoring and to create email campaigns and, okay. um, and all things like uh, clean up lists and that right. sort of thing. So we'd, we'd acquire lists, we'd get lists uh, to send out emails, nurturing campaigns, brand right. awareness campaigns, that sort of thing. So, but, mm-hmm. so they're, they're a logistics company, mm-hmm. right? So this is B2C, right? So they're advertising to, I'm sorry, this is B2B. So yes, they're advertising B2B. to businesses that need to have their logistics taken care of. Yeah, so basically helping people uh, with their import freight. Right. Mostly, but they okay. did exports and stuff too. But okay. their their uh, most of their business was like ocean imports from okay. from China specifically. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they worked with different companies too. So basically, like, a lot of companies that were on um, the Shark Tank used this company oh, as oh, their freight forward. Yeah, because you get a lot of people that just don't know what they're doing for importing, and it's very like things they get very convoluted and right. it's difficult to understand. So it's you know start calling around. So they did land quite a bit of uh, you know, clients that were you know startups and so forth. Um, so, but yeah, it was a, it was an interesting niche, like the logistics industry. It's, it's not like the sexiest industry, you right. know what I mean? So it can be a little challenging to do marketing for, okay? right. but what kept me on my toes, um, when I was at that company was we we're in the middle of uh, the trade war with China. Okay. Oh, right. So here's right. where things get a little interesting. So it's like, okay, you know, we're not, uh, the companies, first of all, it's not a customs they're not customs brokers, but they have customs brokers that are partners that work okay. with them. Okay. So when someone ships over from China, imports their goods, uh, there's a tariff code, which is yeah. a tariff is, you know, tax on imports. Yep. And um, it would be part of a certain class. So like, for instance, it might be, it might be more expensive to ship slippers than sneakers or something. It might be a bad example, but right. what you call it and what you classify the import in is really matters, right? So what we try to do is try to save other companies money uh, by by changing their tariffs code tariff codes and something known as tariff en- tariff engineering so okay um, so it's like when do you call it a work truck when do you call it a van when do you call it uh, when do you call it a sculpture when do you call it lead right you know what I mean so, so in other words it's like okay so the US government has said hey these things we're gonna charge you a ton of money to bring them into the US mm-hmm. and so basically they're looking at this thing and it, it might actually be that thing but if you it could also be something else, depending on how you look at it. So you would use the thing that yes. has the lower tariff. Yes, and okay. you have to, exactly, okay. and you have to, like, you know, be careful. that comes in. And everything we did was very white hat, you know, right. totally le- legit, right. you know what I mean? Because people that were just honestly misclassifying their own goods, and they were, pl- they were paying up the yin-yang for, you know, the imports. So we helped people save a, a ton right. of money. So that was right. that was definitely, um, you know, uh, definitely some of the wins that we got was, right. was uh, you know, starting email campaigns. Hey, you know, just, you know. Uh, just passed a new law. There's new new tariffs imposed on on uh, imports from China and right. so forth. So. so so let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. So um, the work that you were doing, though, mm-hmm. right? This the you know the email campaigns and mm-hmm. the marketing stuff. That's was that stuff that you were doing in your international business program here, or was it just you had these skills with computer related stuff mm-hmm. separate that you just brought to the table? Right. So some skills I already had, like you know they wanted like basic like you know kind of Excel. Okay. Um, you know, Google Sheets and, yep. and stuff like that. But really, it was like they really just wanted someone that they can build, you okay. know, someone they can build up and, right. and develop, you know. So um, they, they trained me, you know, mm-hmm. when I when I was there. Um, I really knew nothing. You know, I knew how to, like, I was a pretty good writer. Yeah. So they, I gave them a writing sample, like, here's a paper I wrote, you know, for right. school. And they really liked it. And they said, okay, because we'll have you write some blogs, too. So I wrote blogs, emails, okay. all sorts of things to, like. So you gave them a paper from school? Yes, oh, I did. Okay. I did. Yeah, right. yeah, I forgot. It was, yeah, it was about, uh, I forgot what it was. I think it was about, um, 
It's about cell phones and just how it just everyone just stuck on their cell phone. For some reason, we had to write about it, but the professor really liked the paper, and so I used that as an example, and they liked it. Because I'm just like, I usually don't think of school assignments as being part of something you would include in your job application. Yeah, 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 exactly. So (laughs) that's cool that it turned out that they wanted wanted one and you had one to show. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right on. Yeah. So, um, so I acquired a lot of good skills early learning about, um, you know, CRM databases. Right. And lead scoring, which is right. very important. So, because the idea with digital marketing, you know, you want to capture leads yeah. and warm leads, and you right. want to funnel them down to sales, right. right? And how do you do that? You're not going to call like 200 people a day. It just doesn't. Well, I mean, some people are designed to do that, but right. but for a small company like we had, we didn't have right. someone that could sit on the phone all day. That's why they had right. me. So I'd go and we'd send out like, you know, put them in a six month email program. Okay. And then sometimes like it paid off like a year later. You know, right. they respond back to the email. Hey, I'm ready ready to to do um, freight forwarding. I'm right. ready to use you guys. So. Huh, interesting. And so how long did that go on for? How long did you do that for? So I was there for just under two years. Okay. Um, and then from there, because, uh, oh, and, I, and I did forget to mention, but I'll, I'll throw that out there, but I did, I did um, do like kind of a couple little podcast episodes okay. for the company kind of oh, okay. towards the end. Right. Then um, I, I, uh, I, saw an, um, I saw a posting on, I think it was on LinkedIn for a, like a kind of like a junior podcast producer slash right. marketing associate. For right. a residential real estate, totally different okay. industry, you know. But you can take digital marketing anywhere, right? You know, right. that's the cool thing. For sure, you know what I mean. Yeah. You, you don't, don't get totally pi- transferable. Here's the here's here's the takeaway: don't get pigeonholed, right? You know what I mean. Expand your your knowledge. So I took my skill sets of learning about email automation, lead scoring, yeah, and and blog writing. I started to learn about SEO there too, right? Um, and then and then um, learning about WordPress and how to put, like work on the web, the company's right. website. website so because WordPress is like the gold standard. So right. if you can if you can learn WordPress, fantastic. Because right. everybody basically uses it for their. It's website. the gold standard, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. So it's a good skill to have. So I kind of brought that over to this um, this other company, and I. I booked podcast guests and I created a lot okay, of stop. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> um, why'd you leave? Oh, why did I leave? Yeah. Just, I left, I left. Okay. Yeah. Let's get into that. So I would just say, um, there's certain things I didn't appreciate. I didn't appreciate about my situation. Okay. Number one is was pay. And right. I know, I knew I had a little bit more earning power. Right. Okay. So don't ever underestimate yourself. Right. Okay. Know what you, you're worth. So how did you know? How did you know that you could be making more? Because I asked around and everyone okay, was, everyone right? was making so, more than me. <laughs> yeah, so talk to people for sure. Yeah, absolutely, right? <laughs> yeah. Always keep an eye So networking, yep. talking to people, yep. looking at listings, like this job's offering this, this right. job's offering that, you know? So, because I, I, and I knew, and, you know, also too is like, I would say, you know, working for the, the small mom and pop company, yeah. um, they came from the old school. You know what I mean? And it was a lot of like, if you're not in your chair and you're not doing this, then they're right. like literally walking around like HR was like l- making sure you're at your desk, making right. sure this, like get a copy, like, well, how long are you going to be with your coffee? Like, uh, yeah. so it got to be like, it really drove me down the ground. So yep. if you don't like that kind of stuff, see, here's the thing too, is like, don't, don't get upset at the things that you can't change. Right. You know what I mean? And you're not going to, you know, just get out there and you get this company and they're not going to, you're not going to, you know, make change in this company to run right. differently necessarily. You know what I right. mean? So especially a smaller company. They've been doing it for like 40 years, right? The same way. Yep. And that's just, they just want everyone just in, in their, in their seat, you know? Yeah. Um, so pros and cons, you know, the, the, again, the, the pro was how your ideas get pushed forward. And yeah. the con is kind of like very traditional. It's like, Get, get your chair in a lot of, I guess, micromanagement, right. I guess I guess you could say. But I did have an excellent marketing director that taught me everything I know, and he got me on the right path. Okay. So absolutely no no regrets whatsoever right. um, with that job. So I just... But I know, think that's also really important. Like, I think it's really important for people to understand, like, when you are in a job, right, there are so many opportunities to learn stuff, and that stuff that you're going to learn in that job is going to be the thing that allows you to take the next step, go to the next place, go to the next level or whatever. I like to use a little analogy for that. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of like in the movie Independence Day. All right. <laughs> so the mothership's going to planet to planet and harvesting right. all the resources. Right. Well, you be that mothership and you go to company, com- company right. and harvest all the information you can yeah. and all the good, the good contacts you, you can. Okay. And when it's time for you to leave, leave. Yeah. You, really, you're in it for you. Because yeah. I think at the end of the day, I mean... I mean, people are all nice and cheery. Welcome to the team and this and that. But really, they're, they're worried about the business. Right. So that, that means that you have to worry about you and protect yourself. So don't fall for anything. Right. Okay. <laughs> so that's pretty much why I left. I saw better opp- better opportunity. Okay. Um, but I definitely, it was, it was a good, it was a good gig. I learned, it was a good way to yeah. start, start out. So I would say definitely get an internship while you're at Cal State Long right. Beach. 100%, if not two. 
two internships. Yeah, you know, if you can, if you can get them. And then, and then, I'm sorry. I think you said this, but I want to make sure I understood. Mm -hmm. So, um, when you decided to move to a different thing, mm -hmm. you went. It was through LinkedIn or through. I found I found the other posting through through LinkedIn, and okay. I uh, at the it was cool because the the recruiter that was posting the job. It was a smaller company too, yep. but little, well, large, larger than the last one. But uh, I I could reach out to her, her directly, so I okay. reached out and I posted her an episode of the podcast I recorded. Okay. So I used okay. what I did at the last yep. company and applied it, kind yep. of building like a portfolio. Yep, for sure. You know what I mean? So I, I posted a link and I posted a couple blogs, and they loved it, and they they uh, called me in for. I think that one I just had probably two really quick interviews, and they kind of made up their mind. Um, so this company was a again, it's a it's a, a real estate in, investing company that was purchased, a newly acquired from a property management company. And at the time of acquisition, they were I mean they got acquired because they were gonna they were about ready to close the doors. Okay, but then they got acquired um, last minute. Right. They had to fire a hundred people. Wow, and then kind of go to like one marketing person, which to me I was the only real marketing person. There was okay. like a head of sales, a marketing person, and the president, and I worked directly for the president, what? which was strange. Yeah, because I, <laughs> yeah. I sat right next to him. They wanted open seating, you know, so they have all right. the open seating with the you know stand up desk, really yeah. cool, huge monitor, a lot of good resources to use. I was on like the I was on like the tenth floor or something, out looking the window. It was like living the dream, you know. I'm like, what a cool job, you know. But I um, but I had to do this guy's this uh, the president's podcast, and so in he was sitting next to me all day and then on the weekend I had to edit the podcast oh, and then so okay. I saw him all weekend okay. so I saw him all week and then I saw him all, oh, all weekend you know so I got pretty burnt out of, of doing that but also while I was there I did um, that's where I started to apply more uh, SEO search yep. engine optimization and to uh, you know really start learning about optimizing certain pages and kind of how it works and writing more blogs and, and and so forth and really creating a lot of content like a lot of um you know a podcast then write a blog that's kind of based off of the podcast series you know what I mean and then right. chop that up into micro content you know and okay. then distribute it, we distribute it out of social media okay that way so that's yeah, cool. so it's pretty pretty cool job <laughs> and then how long were you there for. I was just I was there very 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 briefly and okay. then it was COVID. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, so right. Yeah, so this yeah. is already this is already going up to 2020, okay. right? So I was there through uh, the first part of 2020. Uh, COVID hit, mm -hmm. and then um, here's the thing: is during with some companies, especially commercial real estate, um, when there's pandemics and things and uncertainty, commercial real estate tends to do very well. There's a lot of movement, a lot of transaction. Right. So. Um, a uh, commercial real estate company that wanted someone with marketing and real estate experience, which I had got a hold of me. Yeah. And uh, during the pandemic, um, thank goodness, it was a contract job. Actually, it was just going to be a six month okay. contract. Okay. Um, so applied for that, got the job as a uh, email marketing specialist. Um, right. And that's where I, um, and this is all working from home. We're at the start of the pandemic. Right. And it's like, okay, uh, your first day of work, go to the office, pick up all your stuff. Okay. Okay. So it's like, and then call, call me when you get there. Okay. So, because everyone's at home, right? right? But there was one IT guy absolutely freaking out, <laughs> uh -huh. absolutely freaking out inside of the building, right? And he's got his mask on and gloves and everything right. else, right? I go and I, because this stuff just happened, yeah, you know, like, know like lockdown just be. happened, right. and so and so I, I go and um, you know, kind of like knock on the door and I'm like looking through the windows and stuff, and then all of a sudden he's like, take a step back, right? He opens up the uh, opens up the, the door and kind of like throws this like two monitors at me and a laptop, right? Okay. And then some power cables. So I go home and I set up all my stuff and did all my training. Right. You know, over, you know, it's very typical now. Everything, yeah. every, a right. lot of stuff is remote now, but then right. it was just like, well, right. are we going to do How training do do this, remote? Yeah. And, but you make it work. You do screen share and yeah. stuff like that. And, you know, it's great. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And so, and then you were there and then, so how many more things have you done between then and now? Okay. So <laughs> I've done, I've done a few. I was actually there for two, so this for is two one years. So this is one lesson though, right? It's yeah. like, it's like if you're, if you're, if you're a student now and you're thinking about it, it's like, don't assume that you're just going to go somewhere and that's where you're going to end up. Right. Don't it's settle. like, there's all these iterations of all these yeah. things you can go. Cause so I have, uh, you know, cause I have either students who are, you know, currently students or, you know, people that graduated not that long ago and they're kind of bummed out about the job they're in and they feel like, oh, it's the end of the world. Like my whole life is screwed because I'm in this job I don't like, right? Right. And I think it's like, it's it's really useful to recognize like, no, you know, there's some bouncing around. There's there's mobility, there's freedom, you have choices. And so don't get too discouraged either right. now while you're trying to figure out like, oh, I'm not finding the perfect thing right now yep. and get bummed out about that. Or, oh, I landed in this job I don't like and now the rest of my life is ruined. It's not like that. It's not the middle. Military, I appreciate right. my, my freedom. Oh, you know, right, right, right. If you don't like space, in the military, being like your job, being like your boss, guess what? Yeah. Like, you better learn to love that person, yeah. <laughs> you know, because that's your boss and that's your job and you can't leave, you yeah. know. Well, you could, but, but there'd be terrible consequences. consequences 
you know. Yeah, more dramatic. So, um, so definitely, I exercised my rights. Okay. <laughs> just to be just to be brutal honest. So, uh, I, I was with um, when I was with this company, they quickly got acquired. Okay. Because it's, it's the way it is. Eat or be eaten. Everyone's right. acquiring everyone. Right. You know what I mean? It happens quick, right? Yep. So uh, we got acquired by a monster commercial real estate company, kind of okay. like the leading commercial real estate company, and um, definitely noticed a lot. Well, by then, it was time to return back to office. Right. Right. So it's been like a year or whatever, yeah. year and a half. Time to return back to office. Got acquired. And just, the culture definitely changed, you know, with the, the acquisition. Uh-huh. You know, you could definitely tell it was like a lot more... Um, you know, policy and strict and everything. Benefits and pay got better, right. which is good. But some of the other things kind of, so it's kind of a trade off. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. But they, again, I was a contract and they brought me on full time at that point. Okay. You know, and then um, let's see. Yeah, so, I was there. So can I ask you a question? So has all your advancement been basically shifting from one company to another, or did you actually do any vertical moves up within any given company? So I would say, not, not really. I mean, going from intern to like full time and right. contract to right. you know to to full time. But I was kind of like, I really loved marketing. I just didn't know like what like cause there's so much to it. There's you know there's email, CRM, yeah. SEO, paid search. There's there's um, you know events. There's like a million right. things you can do. So, but I really started to like SEO. And then um, while I was at this commercial real estate company on my off time, I was taking uh, courses through Coursera. Okay. Um, and this SEO specialization, it was like a five module. It took like a year and a half to do to do oh, it all. Okay. Um, but it, um, so just chipping away, you know, like an hour a day or something like right. that, like about a year, year or so. Um, I got a, a, a SEO specialization from okay. UC Davis uh, through Coursera. It was an excellent course. Um, but I really started to like it. And so when as I'm doing, um, I'm doing the emails for this company, yeah. HTML emails. Um, you know, if I was like kind of light on emails for that week or whatever, I would just say, Hey, you know, I know how to do SEO too. And I would jump in and do, do SEO. So that's kind of right. what you want to do is like, don't right. be like, don't, I'm done, you know, right. for the day or whatever, like jump in and do other stuff. So I started doing that and they really liked my work and SEO. And then I started to be like, I think I like doing SEO better than right. emails. So you looked at a need that was in the company yes, and you were like, Hey, I can add some value here. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go and offer even though you're not getting paid for it, right? This is you right. taking on additional yeah. work. Be careful of that, by the way. Yeah, sure. You really, they can really, yeah. <laughs> right, so, so right, so it's a two-edged sword. It's like, it's like you can take on extra work, mm-hmm. it can get noticed, and that can get you promoted or a better pay, or you get some skills that you can use for the next job, mm-hmm. or it could be like suddenly everybody's dumping work on you and you're totally overloaded. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So definitely I saw kind of like a void there. I know there was an opportunity to like kind of apply some things that I know and try to, you know, do a, do a good, good job for them. So... Now with them, um, there was, uh, okay, this is where things get interesting. So there was, I had three opportunities to like promote up or if you, mm-hmm. you want to call it that. Okay. First of all, let me tell you this. Um, when it's your time, it's your time. Okay. Like, you know, for it, when you're ready, you're ready when, and they'll notice and they'll right. tap you when it's, when it's time. Okay. So. Not that I didn't like my job, but I just needed more stimulation because I was doing these emails, cranking out these emails. Right. Like, like literally, I did while I was there. I did three thousand. Okay, <laughs> three thousand emails. Yeah, and that means three thousand reports. And this, it was like a, I was, I was like an email factory. Yeah, you know, basically. So, um, anyways, I knew I, I wanted to do, um, I wanted to do other things. And there was a social, or there was a digital marketing manager in the same team. Um, she decided to, uh, that person decided to leave. And I thought, oh my gosh, I can totally do this job. I mean, it doesn't seem, you know, that difficult and this right. and that. Didn't get it, right? Okay. Then um, I got a new boss and then they left and then another boss and they left. So that's like two new bosses. Right. And I said the third time, I said, why don't you let me apply for it? Right. You know what I mean? Because yep. now we've been through two bosses. I didn't get it. Okay. Then I, lo- then I, at this point, then my director's kind of looking at me like, you want to leave my team or you want to do it? Like, you know what I mean? Because you had asked because about Because I asked about promotions and so, yeah. and so forth. And, and also, let me tell you, too, is like, people are territorial, man. Yeah. I don't trust, like, I almost like, it doesn't matter how nice they are. I think, like, people just try to ask you questions and get stuff from you. Right. And just they can use it against you, like, like later. You know, there was, like, a lot of that in my industry, in the, in the right. office, I, it was, like, a lot of that. So I kind of kept quiet and stuff. But um, I think like, my, yeah. I, to me, it's like, I love it when people are ambitious and want to try right. things, you know, but it, like, it was almost like it was kind of like, I felt like I was being like, almost like shamed for it for yeah. like trying and it kind of made and then, and then after I didn't get the job, she said, now you have to put your tail between your legs. 
Oh, really? She said, that she said that to me. Very wow. interesting. And now, now, wow. it's, now I'm starting to get like a little bit like, okay, now I went from yeah. kind of looking around to like trying to look for an exit strategy. Right. strategy. Right. I mean, so it's really interesting, right? Because, because I think the different companies are going to have different cultures mm -hmm. around these kind of things. Mm -hmm. And it, it's an interesting question, like what percentage of the companies are like this? where it gets political really quickly, and if you make one wrong move, then suddenly the sharks are circling. And how many of them are more like, you know, this is what you do, right? You, 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 make, a, you make an attempt to do something better, to do something more, and if it doesn't work out, then it's like, okay, so you learn something next time around, you know, shift it up a little bit, see if you can make it better. And I think my understanding, right, from the strategy literature is like the companies that enable a culture where people are rewarded for those kind of risks really do a lot better. Right. Yeah. And they have to figure out how to tamp down the politics because it's just there's something inherent, I think, in right. people to play that game. Mm -hmm. But if you can manage to keep that under control, mm -hmm. those companies tend to do better. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's just one of those things is I had a, I worked for an interesting team. Uh, the you know, the the director definitely I would just say, let's just say it's uh, she was very traditional. Right. You know what I mean? In the meantime, she's being passed up, passed over for vice president. Yeah. Like you're like for three years, like she's like, oh, when I get my vice president and she got passed right. over year, like year after year or whatever. So she's frustrated about her right. own stuff. I'm looking at like moving up and maybe possibly getting on a team. So I saw um, another um, a job posting within my company mm -hmm. and I knew the hiring manager. He was like set like kind of like two offices down or whatever. Right. So I said, I think I could do this job. And it was more about uh, CRM and, and um, Salesforce Pardot specialist okay. basically dealing with the you know the emails and the databases and setting up like uh, st setting up strategic marketing campaigns yep. with it okay yeah. and this is stuff I've done before and I'm pre very familiar like two years experience with Pardot um, he said well you know I really appreciate your you know you want to apply but w you need to be a certified Pardot specialist mm. so I, I went and I studied for two weeks and I came back to him and I paid the $200 myself right and I'm like I'm a certified Pardot specialist what's up <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nothing. Really? Nothing. It's just so like, I'll let you know. I'll let you right. know. And I'm like, finally, I'm just like, I don't know what it is, but like, and then I know, you know, this person director yeah. definitely very angry with me now. Right. Like, you know, because obviously she was made aware that I'm trying to, yeah. you know what I mean? Yep. So, yep. so anyways, it, it, take it with a grain of salt, but uh, good experience there. I learned how to do, uh, learn a lot more about HTML when I was there. Okay. And then I became a certified part of specialist and then I got my SEO specialization while I was okay. there. Okay. Now it's time, it's time to start thinking about SEO. So, um, so I got a job, I got a job with, um, Boost Mobile, um, okay. as, uh, as their, their lead, uh, in-house SEO and Dish was, or I'm sorry, Dish networking, like Dish, yeah, like yeah, the old school, the, you, the, uh, not very thing. relevant any, right. anymore. You have the, the, you have the thing in the, the sky thing, the the, thing the, that, yeah. that beeps. That you put on top, yeah. yeah. The thing you put on top of your roof. Right? Yeah, exactly. Well, now they go right. on like RVs and right. campers and stuff right. and fishing boats or yeah. something, you know, but anyways, uh, you know, Dish thought it was a good, a good idea to, uh, to purchase a retail or get into the retail wireless. Okay. So they purchased, um, there was a Republic Wireless Boost Mobile and then Gen Mobile and then a couple other Boost Infinite or something. So anyways, I was kind of running SEO for like all all companies okay. and and I did that for uh, uh, I did that for a year, um, and then uh, most 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 recently uh, now I, I got a contract with a uh, marketing agency uh, that markets st uh, strictly to law firms. Okay, and so I'm doing SEO for multiple multiple clients right now. Oh. So that's kind of been my my journey. It, like you know bounced around maybe like a little little bit more. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm really glad every single move I made. I'm I like I'm glad I made it. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And so now you're doing this thing for law firms. So that's a new industry. Now you have to learn the dynamics in that industry, right? Yeah, you know it is. Well, see, the good thing is SEO. Like the principles always be the same, you know. Right. But you got kind of deal like know like who we're 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 like we're the um, we're the vendor you know, right. for clients, right? Um, I'm not client facing, so I'm okay. doing strictly behind the, behind the stuff. Right. There's account executives that deal with the sales and the working with the, with the client, the law firm. Yeah. And then they, you know, put in a, you know, work order for me to, you know, to start working on, you know, optimization strategies, content strategies and so forth. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that's cool. So that's the trajectory. That's the, that was my trajectory. Yeah, so, so an interesting trajectory, it goes all over the place. Yeah. And that's, I think one of the things that happens for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, Let's say that you could go back in time mm -hmm. to 2018 as, mm -hmm. you know, Wade now, mm -hmm. to Wade back then. Is there anything that you would want to tell Wade back then that might be useful yeah. for him? <coughs> Excuse me. I, I would say, here's the thing. 
there's ambition and there's patience. Okay, if you can imagine like a Venn diagram or something, yep. there's a sweet spot in between when they touch. You know what I mean? That's the spot you want to aim for. So what that means is this. Be ambitious. Yeah. But be patient. Right. Don't be too ambitious because right. you'll scare everyone off. Right. Because you don't know. I mean, there might be some that are like, oh, I'm gung-ho. I want to do what I work. You know, you can work, right. you work 15 hours a day and you can get there. Absolutely. Right. You know, especially in sales. You right. know, if you want, right. like, that's numbers driven. And if you yeah. can do it, they're like, oh, cool. Right. You can do it. You're driving in the numbers. Right. But it's a little bit different. Yeah. You know, for marketing. But I would say, don't be too patient. You know, don't right. be patient like three times playing for a job within your company and you don't get all three. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think finding that balance of, um, yeah, patience and, and ambition. And ambition. You know? Yeah, that's interesting. It is interesting to think of it in terms of that tension between the two. Mm -hmm. um, if you're too impatient, then, you know, if you're really ambitious, you can be too impatient and that can, right. hurt, that oh, can hurt you. Exactly. Yeah. It can, both can hurt you, you know, yeah. extremes. Let's kind of try to find like, you know, balance to show that you're eager, show that you want to, you know, but again, when it's your time, I think, I think you just, sometimes it's best to kind of like wait for them to kind of tap you on the shoulder and be like, hey, because you'll know they'll hint to you. They'll be like, you know, I can see you. They'll say something like this, like, you know, I'll, I can see you do it. Like my, my current job now, um, my, uh, my director um, came to me and said, well, you know, I can see you're doing this and this is kind of the right way to go because if you want to get here, this is kind of like what you have to do to do it. Right. He gave me specific right. examples and gave me a roadmap. No other right. boss gave me that. So right. he's already telling me how right. to do it right. and saying like, I think you can do it because you know your stuff. You right. know what I mean? So yeah. I think um, I think definitely a lot more um, potential. You know. Right, right. So mm -hmm. and that and that and it's, that's a signal that says, hey, they value me here, mm -hmm. right? Or at least my boss values me here mm -hmm. because he's actually thinking about, you know, what are the next steps for me? Right. right. Where can I go? What can I do next? He understands that most people want to, you know, they have some ambition. They want to, they want to, you know, go up or they want to make more and they want to do more things. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's doing absolutely. That. So I guess another question I have, right. Cause I'm in the education business, yeah. right. I'm, you know, teach the college of business and, and I'm curious, like, what did you learn, right. When you were a student, that actually ended up being useful for you? Like how much of it was actually useful? What was useful? Was there any, or is it just like, I'm going through the certification process to get a stamp and that's all I need? Man, and be honest, be know, really honest. I would say like 50% of, okay. of the material, I think. Um, that's not bad. Like, okay, it, it's, it's <laughs> My not, working hypothesis is lower, honestly. But it depends I'm, on the I'm instructor to too, because there's some just sure. like, it, I really felt like maybe, maybe um, some seem to care more than others. Right. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I liked, I liked, okay, so for you, I was actually thinking before you hit me up about this, I was thinking about you, because like you, you, I remember this, I remember this is what you said in, in your, uh, in the strategy, management strategy, yeah. right? Yeah. You said, uh, like, the most important thing that you didn't know is what market capitalization is. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? That's like, that's like the, and no one knew what it, you know, what it class, is, right. but that's like, it's like what, what, you know, well, what's I think what I work, said, you know? I think what I said is, once you're in the business world, mm -hmm. if you've got a business degree and somebody asks you and you don't know what it means, oh. you're going to look like an idiot. Yeah, so absolutely. You should learn it. Yeah. Right? And you should know the difference between like sales and profit too. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Revenue versus profit. Revenue. Profit exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That'd be another, uh, uh, another one. But so there were nuts and bolts kind of things that were just like, this is stuff that's nuts and bolts in businesses. And you have to understand what those concepts are mm -hmm. because you need to be literate. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the terminology and, and so forth, you know, when right. we're talking about like P and L yeah. and, um, you know, uh, you know, different, I'm trying to think of some of the more practical classes I had. So like for instance, for international business, I had like things like international finance and international accounting. And that for me, probably right. those right. classes, but right. the man, that's because of where you ended up exactly for someone else who ends up in a different place. So that might actually be, that might useful. be more, more beneficial yeah. to them. But I think actually my international marketing class yeah. definitely, um, learned, learned a lot, but in the, in just the marketing 300 right. class, okay. I think like learning about the four P's okay. and so forth and, um, and, and what, what it means to position something. Yeah. And I mean, this is, this is a struggle that I kind of wrestle with, right? Cause I'm always asking myself, it's like, are we giving students what they actually need to do what they need to do for themselves in the workplace? And, and I think some of it we do, but then some of it, I feel like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we're, maybe it made sense 20 years ago. Why are we still teaching it this way? Right. Right. And, and that's something I struggle with. And so I always curious, you know, for students and former students who've, who've been out like, you know, their sense of what they're getting or what they got. Right. I think, um, you know, more of a focus. I mean, the, of course, Marketing 300 class, you know, great, the foundations, the principles and everything, but really more, um, 
I wish I would have learned what SEO was when I was in school. You know what I mean? Right. I wish I would have actually, I actually would have, I wish I would have learned more about actually just, uh, you know, spread, spreadsheets and, and so forth. And learn, yeah. I would say learn, I mean. So I, <laughs> I hear, I hear from so many for, uh, former students mm -hmm. say, man, I wish I had spent more time learning Excel. Mm -hmm. it's because like, they'll ask you to do it because they don't want to do it. They so they get, right, an, right. they get an intern or they get a right. new, uh, uh, you know, right. an FNG, we'll say. Yeah. Um, you know, they're going to like, okay, so I need to clean up that list. And I'm not talking about like a list of like 10. I'm talking about records, like 30,000 records yeah. in, a, in a spreadsheet and yeah. keeping everything organized. Yeah. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not the most glamorous stuff in the world, obviously. But it's one of those things like if you're good at doing this, if you know how to uh, how to navigate through Excel and do stuff with it, it's mm -hmm. like companies will be like, "Yes, we'll take you. You can do this." Because yeah. a lot of a lot of people are actually using it. Not everybody, not every, but that is one thing that I've heard over and over and over again. That I'm always like, "Oh yep. yeah, get I, learn how to index match." It's pre a pretty intermediate for formula. Oh, yeah. Difficult. I, I think it's difficult to do, to right. do, but you get it down. You get it down. But that's a very valuable thing. I think a right. lot of companies like it when you know how to do stuff. So stuff learning like some inter, inter, yeah, some intermediate formulas for sure. So let me let me ask you stuff that's not related to the professional stuff, right? Awesome. But really more about like, um, you know, how do you and what have you done to sort of balance that? You know, the the requirements to be successful professionally with everything you need to like be healthy psychologically, physically, personally, right? Because that balance, I think, can be tricky. And so I'm just curious how that's worked out for you and what you've done. So, oh, wow. Okay, that's interesting. I think, like, keeping, you know, just keeping, like, a regular, um, you know, a, a fitness schedule, like, going to the gym at, like, the same time of the day or going for a walk every right. day. Like, honestly, like, every morning I go for a really long walk, like, three and a half, okay. you know, miles, which once being, well, it might up being an hour, you know, right. in a walk. But I'm outside, you yeah. know what I mean? You know, walk along the 405 in Irvine, <laughs> you oh, know, because nice. my place okay. is pretty close to the freeway. Okay. So, yeah, I see that, and I see the airplanes land and stuff. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I go for, go for um, a, a, a walk, and then I go and listen to music. I listen to, to podcasts to kind of enrich me and yeah. so forth. Um, right. uh, and definitely, I think, like, sleep. here's the thing. I mean, I want to try to lecture because I'm not, like, a pro on this stuff. But, like, you know, like, get good sleep, man. And how do you get good sleep? If like I eat, could get a job as a professional sleeper, I would. <laughs> oh, I know, right? Well, here's but. the thing. is like you got to get your circadian rhythm right. Yeah. And then so like eat your meals at the same time and right. then start your turn down, your own turn down service right. um, at, at the same time. And then so if you just start doing that, you get in the habit and you lay down in bed and lay down at 930 every uh -huh. night, right? Put your phone down. No screen right. time because it's harder to get to sleep and your, crawl, right. your sleep right. is less. So. That one I could pretty much be safe. It's safe to say that I yeah. think you know what I mean. That most people. But dialing in your sleep is yes. something that's helpful. Yep, absolutely. It's hard yeah. though. It's hard. It's just like, I mean, I, I'm I'm focusing. I'm on a mission to like dial my sleep in. Mm -hmm. But I've been on that same mission for like five years, mm -hmm. and it's just it's really difficult, right? Because there's just like, there's just times where it's just like, I finally hit my second wind. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, for whatever, for, if I'm working on something, it's like, yeah. do I really want to turn it off now when I know I'm going to be productive and then I stay up late? But it, but it, that's anxiety. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's maybe, that maybe. Yeah. That yeah. sounds like anxiety. Yeah. yeah. And it could trip me up for, you know, yeah. for, for, for later mm -hmm. on down the line. Yeah. But that's an interesting one. Have so he sleep healthy relationships good. too. Like, yeah. you know, your friends and stuff. Like I got like, um, you know, my friends from back when I was in the Coast Guard and some colleagues yeah. from, from school even, you know, and so like well, once a week, I at least try to call, you know, someone. Yeah, that was another question I had because I've had a lot of students tell me it's like, it's not as easy to make friends as it was when you, when they were in college. That right. is so true. Yeah. Well, everyone's busy now, and, I'm and I have a two year old now. Okay. Uh, okay. So that, like, yeah, so definitely, it's like most of my times. No wonder you know, you're focused on sleep. <laughs> exactly, because you you, yeah. you have to, you know. So yeah. now he's in a good he's in a good routine now, yeah. and so, so it's pretty easy. But um, definitely keeps you on on your toes. But you take time for you know your exercise, sleep, your you know personal stuff, right? Like your your time, read a book or something, you yeah. know. Um, so have, did you, I mean, are you like consciously actively like maintaining connections with the people, you know, from before, from Coast Guard or from, you know, from when you were in school and stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So but just on social media, we have a pr pretty good yeah. network of like, you know, friends hit each other up once in a while, take them, take them in a stupid throwback photo. That's always fun. Okay. You know, throwback Thursday or whatever and uh, do all that. So, mm -hmm. and then um, let's see, I guess I'm wondering if you have like a really strong sense for what success means for you? Like, how would you define it? What is it? Yeah, that's a really, that's a really good question. Let me tell you, can I tell you what it isn't? First of all, sure. It's not money. Okay. Definitely not money because like I've been in different, because these different jobs, I'm not saying they all necessarily paid 
increasingly more every right. time I got a new job. Right. Now that was true at the beginning or something, but sometimes you have to yeah. kind of scale it back a little bit and then you find out and you find you find out where you're happy. Right. You know what I mean? So if you're happy doing it and then you know the money doesn't really, you know, if you can pay the bills and stuff and and you know and then right now it's it's hard on everyone. It's, it's these are really tragic times right now yeah. for for I mean it's just expe- inflation is just crazy. Right. It's just a terrible 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 time economically. Um but I think, you know, at the, at the end of the day, it's, it's not. It's not going to be. It's not going to be money. It's like if you if you can think like if you can wake up with a smile on your face, man, you're going to work. Like you're good. Like okay. if you can like not have to drag yourself in. If you start dragging yourself in, right. or like make like sit there and like wake up and you look at the ceiling, you get, like your covers halfway pulled up, and you're like, I just don't want to do this. Then you need to think about something else. Right. Because you should be like get up and like literally like clap your hands and be like, you know what? Today is going to be a freaking awesome day. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then go to work and then you crush it. Right. Right. So that's, that's where you want, where you want to be. But yeah, success is just being, is being happy at what you do. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think in order to, 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 to succeed then you have to be self-aware, right? You have to pay attention to what's going on inside of you and, and, and say, Hey, wait, is this working out for me? Instead to, of just having all these external markers be what defines. You have to be honest with yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. So I, I've, I've made those T, T diagrams before. Like, okay, pros and cons. Like, why am I here? Like, why right. I like it here and why I don't like it here. And right. if your list starts going, the reasons, the things that you don't like, then, you know, it might be, it might be time, maybe to, it's time. To, to, to jump ship. And, and I wouldn't discourage people either. It's like, see, like during this time um, that I was at every single job, I acquired something new. Right. And finally, I'm at the point where... I've been able on side as like a side business, just able to go and do websites and SEO for people, you okay. know, for like skincare companies, startup skin skincare companies, for lighting companies, uh, other freight forwarding companies and stuff. So there's been, um, you know, so definitely am kind of leaning towards, you know, going off and maybe just doing, you know, my my own thing, okay. you know, one day. But uh, but definitely take those skills that 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 you that you um, that you acquire uh, at your at your jobs, and you know what, if if you want to do something right do it yourself. That's the way, that's the way I look at it. You know, don't be, and, and don't think about, you need this plan. Like if you just do it, go out there. If you have an idea, like I can make money doing this, right. like on my own and using the skills that I have and not work for like a lot of people, a lot of people do want to do this stuff nowadays and do their own business. Right. You know what I mean? And, and that right. comes with its own set of challenges and, right. and, and stuff, you know, too, I'm sure, but don't be afraid to do it. Yeah. Because if you can, like, I don't mean it's not cliche or whatever, like it's Oprah, the secret, you know, but uh-huh. you, have, you have to like manifest it. Right. You know what I mean? And like, you have to see yourself in it and see right. yourself doing it. And if you can, and then if you can imagine it, then it's probably is possible because if you can't, right. then it's, it's not, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. But, but, but then the other thing is you have to start doing it, right? I mean, you have to start taking those concrete steps to actually okay, yeah. start. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I say that, right? And one of the reasons I say that is um, I've been thinking about this podcast for three years, awesome. right? I've been thinking about this for three years and it's been spinning around my head for three years. And finally, I was just like, you know, I was, I was hanging out with, with a friend and we were talking about success and failure. And, you know, his kind of thing is like, he's in an environment where he's surrounded by people that aren't as smart as him, but they all have like degrees and stuff that he doesn't have. And right. And, right. and, and so there's, a, you know, we're talking about success. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and, and one of the things that came up is like, look, it's not how smart you are. It's not how good your ideas are. It's not this or that. It's like, it's, just, you got to execute. It, and it's like, if you're not going to execute, nothing happens. Right. So yeah. at the end of the day, you've got to take the step and make that, you know, take some action. Yes, so we were having small that, steps. Yeah. You know, so small, like what I, what I kind of did is, is like, you know, I kind of like put my name, you know, made a little business card or whatever, put my name on there and like meet someone and, you know, kind of notice, hey, like your, you know, your website, use a little work there. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was like, right, I'm Wade, call me, you know? Yeah. And then all of a sudden one day, someone called me, yep. you know? And, and then so I'm like, well, mm-hmm. and we got in the same thing where it was like, okay, you, I got to do something. And so what I did, sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, no, no. You know? You probably know that I do that because you took my class. <laughs> <laughs> and I would do that in class. Well, I wasn't going to say anything, yeah. but stop <laughs> exactly. interrupting me. Um, but it was like, you know, so, th- so then it was like, okay, got to do something. And I basically was like, I ha- I'm, I'm going to force myself to do this. And the way I forced myself to do this was I sent out 100 emails to students saying, hey, I'm doing a podcast, right? And then suddenly right. emails started coming back in. And I'm like, and, and honestly, my reaction was, crap. Now I have to do this because I've got all these students who said, yeah, I'll be, I'm willing to show up and talk on the podcast. Right. So I kind of just had to force myself. So sometimes that's what it is. It's like, you know, I got to take action. You just have to put yourself where 
you know, the pain of not taking action would be just too high, right? Because right. the embarrassment of me having to email everyone back and say, kidding, right, was just like, I wasn't willing to do that. So. Right, that right here. But I'm glad you, like, you know, you, you had the state in it, you know, took a little bit, but you executed it. Yeah, you know? well, so this far, is, we're this, starting this, Yeah, this is awesome. So. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I, I think that's it. That's all the questions I have for now. Mm -hmm. um, it's just been a really, really, really great chance to have a chance to talk to you again and, and, and see what's going on in your life. I'm not going to let you let me go yet without me putting in a plug first. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for okay. sure. Okay, Absolutely. So, okay, so let's talk about some fun stuff now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, you know okay. what? I'm sorry. I forgot. My no last worries. question is like, what's next? Yeah. Right? What, what, what kind of slide projects? What's next? What are you doing? So, My apologies. Okay, so, uh, so I, I, I've, I've been playing music for like 20 years, like writing songs on guitar. And nice. I just started to have these weird coincidences and just things and like these signs from wherever uh -huh. that are telling me to do this. Yeah. And so I, I, um, I, uh, here's the thing is I actually had a hand in injury, I actually slipped on a wet floor, it crushed my hand okay. and I was playing guitar and I had to kind of change up the way I played so I could play because my yeah. hand was injured. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I came absolutely. up with this little like riff or whatever and I'm like, hmm, what am I going to sing about now? And I was just thinking about Irvine uh -huh. and I uh, so you know, live, live, live in Irvine okay. and, um, so a couple things about, about the city is like lots of Teslas. Everyone's got a Tesla. <laughs> I live and in Irvine. Do you have a Tesla? Yeah. No, I do not. Okay. okay. I still have the same car that I had when, when, when I first started teaching here oh, eight really? years oh, ago. Awesome. Yeah, I'm such a cheap that's a, No, that's, that's the way to, yeah, that's, yeah, I mean, everyone else like needs like a new, new right, car exactly. two years. But I need a new car like I need a hole in the head. It's more practical. Yeah, it's more practical <laughs> to do what you're doing. Right. But lots of Teslas. Uh, Stoplights are absolutely just atrocious. I, I'm, I, I, when I moved here, I had a theory that somebody who worked in the office that timed the traffic lights had a brother who owned a gas station <laughs> because it's like you get stopped at every traffic light because they want you to use as much gas as possible so they can sell a lot of gas. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the way to go, right? That's hilarious. Um, so uh, I, I'm, I'm um, you know, thinking about Irvine and you know, kind of like I'm at a like a red light, you know, and I started to kind of come this like, ooh yeah, mm -hmm, Irvine something, <laughs> and I'm like, but I, I just over it took like six months, and I wrote this like song, and I'm like, and then and like and then my girlfriend's like, it's getting stuck in my head, and I'm like, that's oh, a good thing, right? I like you know if it's being you know so so I uh, I I, uh, I called up a recording studio. And uh, guy on his phone, I told him it's a song about Irvine, and he he did not hesitate. He's like, come come right in, and let's let's record let's record this thing. So we recorded nice. it for it took uh, three months. We had a lot of people wow. to work on the song because it's kind of like a, it was a special kind of feature thing. I want to do something kind of like for my first song, my debut thing. I want to do something right. kind of like, and I have to like with music. I'm thinking about marketing. Yeah. Okay. And like, uh -huh. like I'm thinking about the timing to right. release the song and right. doing the social media to right. pro promote it and right. everything. And um, and thinking about like the different like uh, you know TikToks and so forth that I can do to kind of promote promote the song right. Right. So um, I, we have like three guitar players, like a slide guitar player, a nice guitar head, and right. a I don't even want to call him a rap artist. Okay. Because so first of all, I tried to rap like well, I mean just to myself like I had this poem kind of thing going like this bouncy thing, and I'm like it's just not authentic for me to rap right. 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 So the um so at uh, recording the song at Hear No Evil Studio in um, Orange, California, the producer Elliot was like, hey, I got this guy. His name is um his name is Seti said Cedric right. Okay. His name and he's a Long Long Beach um rap artist. Okay. But he's so much more than that. He right. does he does like everything he does you know like piano guitar cool. like drums very talented multi 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 talented person so I was really thrilled to get him in the studio so I wrote down this um, rap verse about yeah. people are just like tied up and straight laced and and how like everyone's got a model three and like and like and like UCI and these different different things and he tied it all together for me and just wow. spat out this beautiful rap about uh -huh. and it is fire let me tell you and and so the song is called Irvine Grit, and I should be launching it in <laughs> October. And people are like, why Irvine Grit? I mean, Irvine's right. not very gritty. Right. It's not very gritty, right? It but, doesn't seem gritty. Exactly. But the, the really the <laughs> lyric is like, like, like um, it, you know, it's the Irvine Grit. They won't give us it. So they're <laughs> okay. not giving us the, the grit. And, and it was like, so uh, yeah. on, the, on, the, on, the, you know, on the surface, I would say it's, um, you know, about maybe being on cam cannabis at a stoplight, right? Okay. At a stoplight. And the stoplight's like extra long, right? And you just want to. <laughs> it seems extra long. But sure, really, right. it's about like, you kind of want to like, you know, it's, it's like the city kind of holds us down with these red lights. And you just want to kind of oh, escape and be creative. And right. really, the song is about kind of escaping in the, the, the fundamentals of this planet 
planned city, right? Right, <laughs> and doing something artful and creative. Huh. So that's, that's really cool. that's really beneath the skin. That's really what the song is about. So, so again, the song is called Irvine Grit. Um, my Instagram. So please, I don't have a release date yet, but it should be um, within the next few weeks. But um, please follow my uh, my Instagram. It's uh, at Hypnic Jerk Music. So that's H Y P N I Q underscore Jerk. <laughs> underscore music. So why did I call why did I call my band Hypnic Jerk? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, so I, I you know it's one of those things like um, have you ever had one before? It's in the middle of the night and like you feel like you're like kind of falling and then you kind of twitch. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's your yeah. body kind of like waking you up or yeah. something. It's a hip a hypnic jerk. So someone oh, already, that's actually a technical thing. That's yeah. a thing. Yeah. Exactly. So oh, someone had already had sure. the name Hypnic yeah. somebody already had the name Hypnic Jerks. Uh-huh. And I was like, well, I can't. So I spelt it with an IQ. So it's H Y P N I Q. Okay. Right. So it's more like hypnic jerk. Right. So right. then people, so my rapper is like, is that like hypnotic jerk? And right. I just think about hypnotic, like the yeah. old school, like alcohol mo- liquor or whatever. Yeah. Like, no, it's not that. So, so anyways, uh, I have another song too after this called The Lasso. So that'll be um, dropping sometime in October as well. I'm really excited. So hopefully you guys can get on my, my Instagram, give me a follow and kind of cool. follow my, uh, my music. That's awesome. That's really great. So and that's that, my plug. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, that, um, that's great to hear. And and again, it's like it's that's all that's part of that whole personal life work balance thing, right? You have to have time for these kind of things that really yes. give you energy that light you up, right? If you're not doing that in your life, then then it's kind of like I recorded the song, and my son my son would nap at like twelve thirty to two thirty. Yeah, and then I'd be taking a lunch on that time. Did that's when I'd go and, oh, cool. and record record the the song half of it at home, and then I I recorded the other half yeah, of this at awesome. the studio. That's so. really awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's great. Um, yeah, well, I'm excited to hear it. Um, excited, excited. So when it comes out, yeah, let me know. I want, I want to hear it. I want to awesome. hear it. All right. So, um, wait, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming in and being my first guest for the podcast. It's and, an honor, Kenji. Thank you so much. And it's really, it's just really great to talk to you and to touch base with you. And I just, um, one of the things I'm really excited about, about doing the podcast is this opportunity to talk to students, you know, face to face. Um, see what we're up to. Yeah, to see what you guys are up to. Yeah. So, awesome. Well, it's been, it's been great. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, cool.